Don't stop! Before I start, I just want to say a huge thanks to anyone, all of you, who have helped us get to 190,000 subscribers. We initially based the channel on retro gaming magazines from the 90s, and it seems that some of you like the format, so thank you so much. I was absolutely gutted when Telltale Games went under, and it's been a real pleasure to see how Annapurna Interactive have taken on the mantle for top quality narrative adventures. This one was developed then by Variable State who have a good track record of producing really compelling stories. Last Stop is a third-person narrative adventure game featuring three different characters in seemingly unrelated circumstances. There's a sprinkling of Stranger Things, Sherlock Holmes and even Doctor Who in there. But does the central line of the game actually capture your attention? Or for this series, is this indeed the last stop? Well, let's find out. Come on, Hughes, this is it. Don't you want to know what's on the other side? Now, although I said three characters, essentially there are four here, as in the first tale featuring Jack and John, you'll have to take on the role of both of them. Initially, it seems like John's living an ordinary civil service life. There's a real flatness to his character and a loneliness and anxiety in the way he takes care of his daughter. If you're a fan of the film Fight Club, which I am, I initially thought it was going to go along the same lines as Edward Norton's character, with a boss who's a complete dick. Careful, sunshine. Don't forget who's in charge around here. And with John having very little self-esteem and unable or unwilling to stick up for himself. Without major spoilers, Jack and John have a moment early on in the tale that sees them inextricably drawn together. And from this point onwards, let's just say things get a little bit strange. One of my favourite aspects of the writing is how the small details are paid attention to. It stands out particularly well in a London-based setting where I'd be more familiar with that than, say, an American one. And the small mentions of things like a chicken dipper dinner and some of the language that's used by the characters, it certainly feels and sounds like London. I like how the experience is broken down into chapters and you can choose which of the three stories to take part in next and the order that you do them. It's all tied nicely together with the image of the three sat on the train and when you choose one they arrive at their stop. The next story follows a schoolgirl called Donna. As with most kids her age, she hangs out with her mates a lot and tries to avoid school at all costs. She's got an older sister who's a policewoman and there seems to be quite a bit of tension at home. There's a good interaction between the three friends and something piques their interest. They decide to investigate and uh, yeah, things get a little bit strange again. There are quite a lot of moments where you'll be thinking, would you really do that? But for the sake of entertainment purposes, we have to suspend our disbelief. The final story arc, and the one I potentially enjoyed the most, centers on Mina. She has an unspecified government job and is clearly a powerful woman. One scene where she's being interviewed is particularly poignant and it does a really good job of building up the type of character she has. You begin to feel that she's a heartless, soulless robot only for that to shift to her being back home and talking to her child. The thing with the narrative here is that it's very believable in parts, particularly earlier in the game. And there are lots of references and nods to London itself that made it feel more genuine. Being able to say the line, are you having a laugh, was particularly pleasurable. I did feel that the story lost a little bit of its finesse as it came to the final chapter, but the overarching tale it told was interesting enough and fans of this style of game will have enjoyed it. Now, let's look at the gameplay and controls. You control the characters using the left stick, you can move around the world. There isn't a run button, but they have solved one of my biggest gripes with fixed perspective cameras. You know when you go around a corner holding right? and then as the camera changes, suddenly you go left. That's not the case here. You can keep holding in the same direction and it will run in the correct one. If you then change direction on the stick, only then will it actually affect the character on screen. I know this sounds so minor, but when you've played loads of games, you'll know exactly what I mean. Throughout each of the stories, you're presented with time-based choices. I wasn't really sure what the reason for giving a timer on these was, because really, whatever you said didn't change things very much. And that's probably one of my biggest gripes with the whole thing. The choices just aren't as impactful as I would have liked. Now with that said, the actual writing of the story itself is good enough to still carry the game along. And I understand the difficult butterfly effect that can be had from trying to implement every small decision. But actually you can have decisions that affect something that ends there and then that still would have been impactful for the player. I'm happy to offend that character that I'm never going to see again or maybe say something nice to them and see them walk away with a smile. I feel like that's a bit of a missed trick here. 
it's all just a bit too linear. Even when you're walking from point A to B, the camera will be shifting and moving to point you in the next direction, and you know that when you arrive, you won't be able to drastically change the outcome. Now, there are lots of different activities that you can undertake, things like eating your cereal, throwing small canisters around the screen, just little mundane tasks that are interspersed between the narrative to mix things up. There are some quick time events in there, some button pressing, the usual fluff to fill an adventure title, but I did find a couple of irritations here as well. On one of them, I just couldn't find the last thing I had to do, and as such, I couldn't progress. You would have thought that after five minutes of me scouring the screen, there would have been some form of prompt just to th keep things ticking over, but it never came, and when I eventually found the one thing I had to throw a canister at, it was easily missed, and it wasn't very fun in the first place throwing those. So having them as something you had to do felt like filler. As far as the gameplay goes, it just feels a bit clunky. I like that they try to mix in some first person segments, but those quick time events don't do much for me as a player. I'm kind of confused why they're still so prevalent in games. As far as narrative adventures go, it's actually quite clever and I did thoroughly enjoy the characters and the story that was told, but in comparison to something like a Telltale's game, the core mechanics aren't quite as good in my opinion. I needed the developers to let go of my hand and give me some freedom. The controls are okay and I do like that implementation of the directional camera system so that I didn't have to worry I was going to suddenly change directions. There's no run button here, it's very simplistic and the use of HD rumble is minimal. Overall I give story and gameplay a combined 14 out of 20 and controls also score 14 out of 20. Visually, Last Stop on Nintendo Switch has some very impressive features. The lighting system, for example, with the real-time shadows and soft shadows is actually very impressive. I thought the environments were very well captured. Things like the London streets, I actually recognise some areas. And it's probably the most realistic depiction of the London Underground I've ever been on. But some of the animations were quite clunky. I noticed a few glitches with the characters moving through objects in the world, and there's a bit of a lifelessness to some of the facial expressions here. It can make it feel a little bit awkward when it shouldn't be. Thankfully, the performance is decent across the board, seems to be about 30 FPS consistently, and that's the same for Docked and Handheld. You can tell they didn't struggle too much in that department because you can screen capture in both those modes as well. They've clearly compromised in resolution though, and tried to make it up by applying some quite heavy-handed anti-aliasing. While there are no jaggies here, you will notice some strange artifacts, some shimmering in shadows and other textures, and just a generally blurry visual. It's not terrible, and there are times it actually looks quite pretty, but it's not a standout for sure. Where the game does excel though is in the audio department. I thought the soundtrack was lovely. Not really, but I do care about going to prison. You're not buying this knife, you're too young. Dickhead. Out! It really did take on the feeling of a British crime drama at times. But then when the supernatural kicked in, there's a solid shift in audio direction. Character narration's pretty good across the board. Some of the lines aren't delivered as strong as others, but these aren't over-the-top voice actors. Everything's quite subtle, downplayed and, uh, well, British, I guess. For me, I give visuals and performance 14 out of 20 and the audio scores 16 out of 20. Last Stop will set you back £19.49 or your regional equivalent. It has a reasonable size download of 5.4 gigs and for the price it's asking you're getting around about 6 hours of gameplay. I made the early comparison to the Walking Dead series and well look those games were £12.99 each and I'd say that was much more appropriate for the amount of content you're getting close to £20 for six hours, and six hours that's good, but potentially not great, isn't on the money for me. I'd be waiting for a sale of around about 50% on this one. It is a nice adventure game, it's enjoyable for sure, but that's just a tad too steep. I give value 12 out of 20. This is crazy. Last Stop is very much my type of game, but I also know the flaws that are there, and hopefully have articulated them well enough to you. If you're a fan of adventure titles, then do eventually pick this one up because it's very enjoyable. It's just currently a little bit too expensive for me, applies too many of the genre tropes like QTEs and wouldn't hurt from a slight resolution bump. It scores a switch up score of 70%.
Thanks as always for everyone who watches for helping us to hit 190,000 subscribers. We appreciate every one of you and the comments that you leave down below. And let me know what you think of this game. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya. Steak. If you want my help.